Latte. Welcome to Beginner's Latin Lesson 10. This lesson is about adjectives, more specifically first and second declension adjectives in Latin. Simply put, an adjective is a word which modifies or describes a noun. I'm sure you can think of many examples in the English language. We have already encountered some examples in Latin too, two of which are multus and suus. Multus is listed in all three genders, as is suus. We have multus, which is masculine, multa, which is feminine, multum, which is neuter. Similarly, we have suus, which is masculine, sua, which is feminine, and suam, which is neuter. This is because adjectives in Latin can be either masculine, feminine, or neuter, depending on the gender of the noun which they describe. Also note that suus is what we call a possessive adjective. It denotes the possession or belonging of a noun. For example, in English we may have phrases such as his coat or her shoes. It's also important to note that where we use suus, sua, suum depends on the gender of noun which is being described and not the gender of the person who possesses that noun or object. Latin adjectives decline just like nouns. Latin adjectives must agree with the noun which they describe. This is called adjective agreement. This means that if an adjective modifies a masculine noun, we must use its masculine form. Similarly, if it describes or modifies a feminine noun, we must use its feminine form. And the same applies for neuter nouns. Furthermore, an adjective must agree with the noun it modifies in number and case also. Take this example, Puelarum multarum, of the many girls. Puelarum is plural feminine and in the genitive case. Therefore, multarum, as it describes puelarum, must also be plural, feminine, and in the genitive case. How do we go about declining a Latin adjective? Let's take multus as our first example. Depending on the gender, number, and case or syntactic function of the noun being described, multus can take one of 36 different forms, as you can see in this table. In order to decline a first and second declension adjective, we acquire the stem by taking the A off the feminine nominative form. In this case, we get mult, M-U-L-T. We then add the appropriate ending to the stem. Now let's look at how we would decline suus. We take the A off the feminine nominative singular, which gives us the stem S-U. We then add all the appropriate endings. There are, however, some first and second declension adjectives which behave slightly differently. An example being pulker, which means beautiful or handsome. Notice that the masculine form is pulker, whereas the feminine nominative singular is pulcra, and the neuter nominative singular is pulcrum. Just like with multus and suus, the stem is formed by taking the a off pulcra, the feminine nominative singular form. This stem is then used to form all other forms of the adjective with the exception of the nominative masculine singular and the vocative masculine singular, which are both pulcher. There is one other group of first and second declension adjectives which behave irregularly. These are the first and second declension adjectives whose genitive singular ends in ius. Alius is an example of this group. We form the stem in the exact same way but notice how it follows a very different pattern from multus and suus, particularly in the genitive and dative singular forms. The genitive singular form ends in ius for both masculine, feminine and neuter, and the dative singular form ends in a long i. Here is another example of this group of adjectives, alter, which means the other or the second. Notice the ius ending for all three genders in the genitive singular and the long i ending in the dative singular. Now let's learn some Latin adjectives. Amicus, which means friendly, welcoming, amicable or pleasing. You will typically see it used together with a noun in the dative. This indicates to whom the subject of the verb is friendly. Puela, puero, amica est. The girl is friendly to the boy. Inimicus means hostile or unfriendly. Like amicus, it can also be used with a noun in the dative to indicate to whom the subject is hostile or unfriendly. Bonus means good. Take this example, poeta, 
bonus. Remember that poeta, masculine first declension noun, just like nauta and agricola. These nouns have their origins in ancient Greek and ways were adopted by Latin. The ancient Greek words from which they are derived are masculine, which explains why poeta and nauta are also masculine in Latin. So bonus is masculine, nominative and singular, so that it agrees with poeta, which is also masculine, nominative and singular. They agree in gender, number and case. Even though the endings are not the same, the adjective agrees with a noun. Clarus, clara, clarum, bright, clear, or renowned or famous. Iratus, irata, iratum, angered, furious. Laitus, laita, laitum. This can mean happy when describing people, but it can also mean flourishing in other cases. For example, agri laiti, the flourishing fields. Liber, libera, liberum, free. This is different from liber, with a short i, which is a book. Magnus, magna, magnum, big, large, great. Malus, mala, malum, bad, evil, destructive, ill-looking. Miser, misera, miserum, poor, wretched, miserable. Nous, noah, noum, new, young, recent. It can also mean unusual or strange. Parus, parwa, parum, small, and Pulker, pulcra, pulcrum, which we have seen previously, which means beautiful or handsome. We also have Romanus, Romana, Romanum, which means Roman. This can also be used as a noun as well as an adjective. Walidus, Walida, Walidum, strong, healthy, well, worthy. In Latin, we can also employ a conjunction just like we do in English, to string together multiple adjectives. In English, we typically use the conjunction and. For example, the boy is big and tall. We can do the exact same thing in Latin. There are two ways we can express and in Latin. We can either use the word et or the enclitic conjunction que, which is stuck to the end of the noun. So we have puer malus et miser est and Puer malus miserque est. These are two ways of saying the exact same thing. The boy is evil and miserable. You remember that in lesson 9 we discussed uses of the ablative. One more use of the ablative is the ablative of manner. The ablative of manner conveys the way an action is performed. In English we may use an adverb to convey the same meaning. The ablative of manner typically takes the form cum plus a noun, it can also take an adjective. When the ablative of manner uses an adjective, cum must come before the noun. When an adjective modifies the noun, cum is optional. Here are some examples. 1. Agricola cum studio laborat. The farmer works with zeal. We don't have an adjective to modify studio here, so cum must be used. 2. Regina cum sapientia poetis concilium dat. The Queen gives advice to the poets with wisdom. A more natural translation would be The Queen knowledgeably advises the poets. Notice cum must be used here too. The third example is Nautai magna cura ad patriam suam navigant. The sailors navigate to their homeland with great care. Notice we have two adjectives here. One adjective which modifies patriam, it's their homeland to which they are navigating, and we also have an adjective used as part of the ablative of mana, magna cura. Notice here because we have magna modifying cura, great care, we do not need to use cum. So what have we covered this lesson? We have learned about first and second declension adjectives, including how to decline them. I have also introduced the conjunctions et and que, which both mean and, but are used slightly differently. Lastly, I touched on the ablative of manner and how to use it with an adjective.
Thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it.